and welcome. I hope you are having a happy December. It is time for our favorite video. <laughs> That's a finished pages video. This is November 2023 finished pages. Uh, disclaimer, you'll be able to hear my fan blower over there. Uh, I have my propane fire on because it is really, really cold in my cabin tonight. Just got home from work and I'm ready to spend some time with you. So let's look at what I did in November. So here's my coloring book. This is a bunch of just mental bleh, puked out here on the page of things that I kind of wanted to do this uh, in November. When I ended up doing, my goal was 10. I ended up doing 12. Yay me. I didn't do any buddies, like no buddies. <laughs> and then um, I dealt in three untouched books. So of those 12, that ignore that there's no way I can have two pages in three books so I obviously started keeping track of my untouched pages and then stopped um I only did two videos I purchased three books and de-stashed one so my total books now are at 134 still untouched is 41 which is 30.6 percent which is I'm still decreasing even though I bought more than I de-stashed because in October these little tiny writing I was at 31.8% and now, and at September I was at 33.6 and now I'm at 30.6. So, you know if you're keeping track of the tenths of a percentage that <laughs> you're wanting any little win. But um, it is working. I, every month I'm coloring in at least two, uh, it seems to be the average and often more so of untouched books. So, let's look at what I did. So, the first one I did in the month was out of the Kawaii Tarot Coloring Book by Lulu Mayo, and this was for my hashtag Color the Tarot. I try to do something in that every month, and I put out a video every month. So, if you're interested in coloring tarot cards, tarot card pages, check out that playlist, Color the Tarot, on my YouTube channel. There's, there's a whole playlist for it. Start with the first one and work your way through, and anytime you finish a page of the tarot, just post it, uh, tag me, with, and also put this hashtag on it, and I will get it into the video, and it will be there forever for all the next videos. There's no time limit, no deadlines, and no order. You get to do this as you want to. So what I did in this one was I did the chariot. Now in this one, <laughs> I had it as a whip, didn't realize it was a whip, um, finished it, so it's done now. And as I think I've said before, this is acrylic paint back here and some gouache probably. It's all, um, this is gouache, but the rest of it is all pencils. And the pencils I used were uh, Black Widows, Spear Farben, and Kalur. So I used a combination. I really wanted to get this to look like it's glowing, this bright green pond so that was uh definitely in the either the black widow or the spear farbens probably the spear farbens they work really well on this paper i finished it off with um, some shiny gold acrylic paint in various places i had shiny gold washi tape this is black acrylic paint here matte black acrylic paint and that is my picture of the chariot The Chariot was the last page we've done in our Color the Tarot series, and the next one we're doing is Strength, and that should be coming out in the next couple days. Yeah, that was a really fun page. I have a hard time in this paper, but I'm learning that paint works really well and some pencils. Um, Polychromos, and I don't have Prismas, but my favorite pencil is Polychromos, and they don't work so well. But uh, this is paint and pencils. Um, this is all paint. This is all paint. So that's the only thing I found that really works well in this paper. But I do love this book and I love working in it. So I try to work in it at least every other month. All right, let's see what else I did. All right, this is one of four PDFs I did this month. And this is a new artist to me. This is Rena Art. You can see her name right down there, Rena Art. And she's at Coloring Books 2020 on Etsy. And this is her page called Fortune Teller. 
Now this page um, was a happy accident. Um, I was trying to use, I found a weird 12 pack of Crayola watercolor pencils. I've never even heard of them, don't know how I got them. So I tried them and they're absolutely terrible, but they're what made this wonderful texture in the back. Once I realized they were not gonna work for me somewhere around here, I was like, wait a minute, that's actually pretty cool. So I just sort of blended them as best I could, which that's about it, and then went over them with them dry to make the hash marks, and I really like the background that made. Um, the rest of this is done in alcohol markers. So she's all alcohol marker. I've got some white Posca pen in here, and here, wherever there's the white. I have um, a trio of my Copics that I love for bats, so I love to use them for bats. This is all Copics. When I say alcohol markers, it's almost all Copics. I have a few odds and ends of Spectrum Noir, but Copics are my favorite. I decided to make her pumpkin a little bit pinky. Um, I kind of wanted it to go with her. She's light, she, you know, she's purple and yellows, and I wanted her to be kind of I didn't, I didn't think orange would work for her, so I decided to give her a, sort of a pink-toned um, jack-o'-lantern. What else did I use on here? There's some glitter gel pen that's in here in a few places. Oh, or her eyes. Her eyes are very sparkly. And her nails. Her nails are sparkly. See that sparkle on her eyes and nails and her necklace? Those are all glitter gel pen in there. I really liked her. This is very different from my style, very different. And it all started with me trying to do the background. I'm learning to do backgrounds first because I'm not very good at them. And then if I mess them up, I can do something else. Um, if it's in a book, I can't very well toss it, but I can adjust it and go with what I've got. At the PDF, I can just, you know, recycle it and print out another one, which is why I'm loving these PDFs so much. But I really like her. I think her skin turned out well. Um, I've got some Copics that work for that. Um, I thought she was great. And Rena Art, it's really hard to to mess up her color, her, her excuse me, her images, because they are so good and they're so easy to color. So highly recommend her. And it's fun to be able to print out just what you want. So yeah, that's Fortune Teller. All right, let me show you what I did next. After that, those two pages, I decided I needed a, a color by number. So I whipped out this one, which is my favorite. And I did this one. It's Daffy Duck hugging somebody. I don't know. Um, I loved it. I had a really hard time with my materials. Um, I tried using, I found a, I keep finding these old art supplies that I don't know where they came from. And I found a metal lunch pill, I love those lunch pills, full of Blick acrylic paint. I have no idea how old it is, but I found out it's too old because <laughs> I tried to use it, it smelled funny, and it couldn't cover anything. So then, I, not the black, the black is my favorite black, the um, Apple Barrel Pavement. But I tried, see, look at it, Ugh, look how bad he looks. <laughs> I just kept trying and kept trying. So uh, from far away, it's not too bad. I threw away all those paints, but I'm glad I figured it out on a color by number and not on a, you know, a page that I really cared about. And who's this creeper? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> I also kept trying with those paints over here, and, and then I also used some old paint pens I've got, and none of them were working well. So I was able to throw away some old supplies, which is nice. I haven't brought myself to finish this one because um, it's it's so rough. I mean, this is going to peel right off because the paint was old. I don't know who this guy is either, but um, I, I will work on this because I hate leaving an unfinished page. I don't like leaving unfinished. So I've done these two. I want this one done. I can't leave it like that. And this guy's all right. He's a lesson. Um, he was helpful. This was a helpful page that helped me get rid of some supplies that needed to be gone, gone. And then I'm working on this one. That's the one I'm working on now in December. Isn't it cute? I also, as I have extra colors of paint, like move forward and work on different things. I had some extra red and some extra yellow mixed up. I don't want to waste paint. Plus I mix the colors, so I don't want to waste it. But yeah, I don't know who this character is and I really don't know who that one is. If you guys do, let me know. Okay, on to the next picture. 
Okay, we've got Mythagoria, Darkest Desires by Fabiana Atanasio. This is, oof, I don't know what my favorite Mythagoria is, but this one would be very close to the being my favorite. And what I did this month was Fluffy. <laughs> I'm calling him Fluffy. <laughs> I had a blast doing this. When I got into this book, I remembered, again, like I do every month when I open up Mythographic or Mythagoria, how much I love doing these pages. It just, alcohol marker is my favorite medium and it just takes it so well. And see, this whole page is alcohol marker. So, um, yep, it's all alcohol marker. There is some acrylic paint pen outlining his fluffy collar. There is some metallic acrylic paint painted on all the little blobs that Fabiana likes. I kind of made them like petals. And I just made this, <laughs> I wanted the juxta juxtaposition of, cause Fabiana already did it for us, right? She has this kind of scary skeleton cat that's hissing at something, but with a big fluffy collar on him, like a royal throne with a fluffy pillow. And I just imagined this as some royalties cat but everyone's dead including the cat <laughs> and so I just made it all fluffy and fun I put some glittery stuff around the pillow there's a, that's glitter gel pen got some glittery stuff on the pillow and then I did wood I love to color wood um and then I just had a blast I have really loved to color bone I um the way I color bone is I just use the uh, in the Copic line, it's the warm grays. So I use like warm one, warm three, warm five, and warm seven. And one being the lightest, seven being the darkest. And I just usually start from, sometimes I go light to dark, dark to light, but the darkest goes where the joints touch and the eyes and things like that. And then as they get away from those cracks, the, the pens get lighter. So out here, away from these dark cracks is the is the warm one, where I just want a little bit of, color but where I want shading I use the three the five the seven and that's all I do then the rest of it is left the page color white so bone is really easy there's not very much coloring going on I mean all that white is the page white and then she had to have a pink collar so that's fluffy <laughs> and this green um I'm not very good with coming up with a color palette I just sort of grab what looks like I want to use next and as Jojo Zahanna here on YouTube often says she paints herself into a corner like she colors herself into a corner and I will do that I'll get all you know I'll get I'll get all these colors on the page and then I realize I don't know where to go next because nothing's really going together all I knew is I wanted the cat pinks so then I brought in the purples and then this green just sort of happened because I knew it was a lot of ground to cover. I didn't want to use my Copics and I had a cheap alcohol art marker that had a lot of juice in it. <laughs> so I put it down and it turned out I really liked the green. <laughs> That's an unusual color for me to use as a background. And there's still a lot of juice in that pen, so you might see it again. But anyway, this is Fluffy and that's from Mythagoria Darkest Desires. All right, I'll show you what I did next. Here's another one of my favorite color by numbers, and it's the Villains one that you can get here in the States. You can get anywhere, I think. And um, this is one that I also work ahead in. Like if I have extra paint, like extra black, extra brown, I just go to the next one that needs that color. I have a lot done in here, and then I have a lot that are just getting colored as I, as I have the paint ready. Um, this is when I did... In October. This is one that I did. I did two in November. This is one and I used, I just, I was like, Candace, what are you thinking? This is single-sided. Why are you not using alcohol markers? Why are you using paint all the time? So I was like, Durr! so I used alcohol markers on this and I purposely made it streaky like this. I, I didn't want just a flat wall. She's in a, like a stone and wood cottage. Um, I kind of got halfway through this and realized I should have probably had a plan for the streakiness and not just be like, bleep, 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 bleep. But anyway, it's, I wanted it to look kind of rough around her. And then I started, I don't like it when the color goes around the, I mean, it should be going all straight, but whatever. It's a color by number. Um, I think her hair, nope, that's alcohol marker too. It's all alcohol marker. Yep, everything is alcohol marker. Now... 
I take that back. This is paint. I can feel it. That's what I did. I did not want to waste my alcohol marker, so I did paint. But I didn't want to bother putting it on like like a rational, sane human being and put it on smoothly. I just went blip, 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 <laughs> with different colors of gray. That's right. I remember doing it now. There's a little bit of glitter gel pen here on the carafe and on her plates. Uh, I think that's about it. This was an experiment just to see how alcohol markers looked in here and they're great. Um, you can see the numbers through them, but the nice thing is the numbers in this book are fairly light and they're not on everything, which is annoying, but also means that um, there's a lot of squares and stuff that don't have numbers on them. So you can use alcohol markers. And then because I like this one so much, I actually bordered it in the black acrylic paint. So I think I'm gonna use alcohol markers more in this book. It was, it was a lot of fun. The other page I did was the... Oh, the devil. I think it's from Fantasia. Sorry, I should have marked it. Maybe it's further on. See, this is what I do when I have extra paint. There it is. As I just color a little bit and pretty soon the page is done and I don't even know it. This is the devil I think from Fantasia. Um, there's a lot of glitz and glam in him. Um, I goofed up this whole part. I, the, the numbers, there were some numbers missing and I didn't realize this was also part of the rock. So it just became like, I don't know, shadow. And then he has a rock, he has a town of volcano. He's got red lava dripping down. He's got a red sky. And then I made his yellow lightning streaks. I painted them uh, acrylic metallic gold to make him really shine kind of went off script here. Um, I wanted his wings to look more velvety, so I added some purple in there. I didn't really follow the, the colors on this one, which is also why I covered them up with black acrylic. <laughs> no, I just like to finish the pages with that, and sometimes I forget. I really like this one um, for being a complete mistake and just making stuff up as I went. It, it turned out really dramatic. The The pictures in this, in this book are great. You have to... Um, be okay with every now and then numbers being missing. And then you, if that's the case, I think it's a printing error, but if that's the case, you can put the color in you think is appropriate. Oh, look at that one, Ursula. That's great. Or you can look at, you know, you can look at the finished pages. The finished pages are all, you know, in the back and the front. Then you can look at the finished pages and find what color it's supposed to be, which is what I should have done for this. But no, nah, I just put the colors in I wanted. So that's My Little Devil. So I did two pages in The Villain's Color by Number. This is such a relaxing book. I love it. Not everybody loves it, <laughs> but I do love this book. All right, let me show you what I did next. Okay, this is a PDF, and I'm going to zoom you in, but I wanted you to see how small it is. This is Mystic Art Mirrors, and this is from her um, Zodiac book. And I liked the page so much, I liked all the pages, that I bought the book off of Etsy. And I first printed it out in a large size, and I was like, no, that's, I, I prefer it small. It's much more manageable. There was a lot of extra space. Um, there's a few things going on here. One, I did the background first, and that's a stencil I have. It took a lot of time because I had to sort of like you know, put it on the, the thing and then not, and then sort of like block it off with paper so that I made sure I didn't rub or rub very carefully with a very small blendy brush to make sure that I didn't go into the, um, into the design. So that was very, very, I was very careful about that. And it took a while. And then um, I screwed it up and threw it away. And then I started again. <laughs> because it's a PDF and I did it all again. And this time I didn't screw it up. The last, the first one, I put the skeleton right here. She didn't have a neck. <laughs> and so I trashed that one. I got it right this time. And then I used a gold pen and I went around with the gold pen and put like some stars and I outlined some of the parts of the skulls. And once I thought that was good, then I started on the rest of the drawing because I wanted to make sure I got the background first because I knew it was going to be tricky. So for her, she's painted. Um, her skin is pencil, but all this is gouache. 
I have, I use the um, Hemi gouache, H-I-M-I, and there's a beautiful red in there. And what I do is I take the red, this is the same technique I used on the, um, on the Sarah Richter page I did last month, where I put a daub of red, let me get a paint, I put a daub of red, a daub of black right next to it, and then I run my paint pen through it like this, my paint pen, my paint, my brush like this. So half of it is red and half of it is black. I don't mix the two colors. So daub of red, daub of black, and then I go boop, like that. And then I take my, my brush, let me do this end so I have less shadows, and I go swoop, and then I run it through the two colors again, and I go swoop, oh, I clean it off, and then I run it through the two colors again, and I go swoop, and what it does is that's just one pass. There's no shading, there's no other colors in there. Um, that's all I do, and then it's done. So that's how you get the black and the whatever color, other color you want. I wouldn't use two colors that are very close to each other because you wouldn't get much texture then, but that's what I did. Her hair literally took like five minutes and it was done. I mean, maybe five minutes, probably more like three minutes, but it was super easy. It, well, actually, I spent more time making these little wispies <laughs> than I did doing her whole head of hair. So that's my favorite way of doing hair is with paint. And then I painted her claw. Uh, I think I did her claw in watercolor though. I don't, I think I used, let me look at and see my notes. Nope, it says I did use um, all, yes, I did. These are Ranger, these are the Distress watercolor pencils because it's much lighter, you can see through it, see? I didn't want it thick and opaque like this. I wanted it more able to play with it a bit with, with light and shadow. So I used, um, I thought about whipping out my um, rows of watercolors, but they were out of my reach and I was lazy. So I grabbed my watercolor pencils from Tim Holtz and he's got some great reds and oranges in there and I made her claw. Now I realized after I made it bright orange like that and the legs that this is supposed to be a scorpion and I kind of painted it like a lobster. So I don't actually think scorpions are that color. I think they're black, <laughs> but this scorpion is lobster color. <laughs> so this is Scorpio, if I didn't say that. This was the Scorpio for November. And this was for um, the hashtag Zodiac Color Along 2023. And I'll put that across here. Um, and my friend Kate, uh, and I'll put her, hash, her, her tag here. Um, coloring with Kate, she hosts that. Then when I was all done, I felt like it was still too bright and white. So I took black Distress Ink. Um, it might have been Distress Oxide, not sure. And I took a blendy brush and I, I know I have to be careful and I tried, I really did. And I just go around the edges, but whenever I use black, I'm gonna get it somewhere. And what I did was I smudged my finger right there. So she got black ink on her face. And that was the very, very last thing I did. It looks like I got some on her nose too. And I was like, oh, do I trash the whole page? No, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but no, I'm not gonna trash the whole page. I'm pretty proud of what I did. And uh, so she's just dirty. She's a dirty girl. And then her skin, um, I used, you know what? That might also be, I think that's also a little bit of the Ranger, but I looks like I used some pencil too, and I didn't write down what pencil I used. Anyway, so that is Scorpio. Now this month is my birthday month and I will be whipping out Sagittarius out of this book as well. I'm really glad I bought it, the Etsy printable, rather than the book itself because it's allowing me to, again, like I said last month, take chances. I can, I would not do this sort of mixed media thing if the page was in a book. I would play safe. But since I can throw it away and start over, I'm just taking all kinds of chances and I love it. So, yeah, that's where PDFs rock. All right, let me show you another one. Now I know this does not look like something I would color, <laughs> but it, 
I was obsessed with that face. Look at those eyes and the posture and the perspective. We're kind of looking down on her and she's looking up at us, but she's shrugging her shoulders. It, she just says so much in this posture. And this once again is Rena Art, Coloring Books 2022. No, Coloring Books 2020. And this one's called Magic Sweets. This was another one I did. It was a leftover from Halloween. And on this one, I used all alcohol markers. And other than some metallic acrylic for the dots, that's all that's on here. Not a single pencil, nothing else. It's just alcohol markers. Now I got into this, when I saw this page, I immediately wanted to do those apples red. And then I wanted to base the rest of the picture off of these red apples. I got into the third apple and I realized they're dripping that these probably aren't candied apples, like the way I made them, but they're caramel apples. Because <laughs> I don't think, if candied apple is dripping, if, if she's got hot candy dripping on her finger, she'd have a very different expression on her face. So I think these are caramel apples, but oh well. I didn't want to paint them brown. I don't want to color them brown. I was tired of brown. So she got all pinks and everything. I had a lot of fun. She got a neat little bumblebee there and a neat one there too. Um, again, this is just my Copics, a little bit of Spectrum Noir. I had a lot of fun with her hair. Um, these are lightly grayscaled, so that really helps with the hair. Again, this hair is just one color. It's just that it was grayscaled, so that made it super easy. Um, I knew I wanted to make her blonde hair with light eyes. I don't often, and light skin, I don't often do that. Um, but she just looked it. And then cookies and such. This is just, this was really a lot of fun. Very different from my normal style, but something I enjoyed so much. Um, again, Rena Art, her stuff is just really, really easy to color. And her grayscale is, she gives you different options of degrees and you can choose the lightest one. Um, but love this page. All right, got a couple more. Wouldn't be a month without mythographic, more mythographic. I had never colored in this one. Uh, I kind of forgot I had it. And I love Joseph Cat and Bang, especially not the super old ones because he kind of grew up in his, in his, in his uh, images. This one is really good. And I think when I first bought this, I looked through it and I was like, oh, that's a lot of snow. And I just sort of put it away. Plus it's got really annoying hidden objects. But um, I got to looking through it again I was like, this is gorgeous. It's not a lot of snow. What in the world was I thinking? And I've got some pages marked that I want to do for winter. But this is what I did in November. This is the re this is the frog. Um, now, I knew I wanted to make them red, like the poison dart frogs. Uh, I was pretty sure I wanted to. So what I did was I went on Instagram and looked up the hashtag, uh, I think I looked up Mythographic Wild Winter, Joseph Kattenbang, I looked up uh, Frog Wild Winter. I was just trying to find this page and I scrolled through a lot and I saw a lot of you that have done this page. Um, and you did so many amazing pictures. And then I got to doubting my red frog. I'm like, uh, should he be red? But I decided I really wanted to do him red. So I did him first, which is unusual to do the main for me because oftentimes if I do the main image first then I'm going to kind of get bored with the rest of it and it it you know it might become a whip so I usually do the background and everything and let save the main image for last because so I'm still excited in the page but I did the main image first I wanted to get that red down it took this is all alcohol marker except for the background and the snow so the alcohol markers um for the frog it took me a bit to get the red I wanted um, and to get the shading where I wanted it. I, it wasn't looking right for a while, but I just kept shading more and more and more. And then I went and looked at some pictures again and I realized, you know, so, sometimes the more you shade, the more realistic it looks. It was looking very flat. So I added the shadows to come in more and to be more darker up here. And then he started look, taking shape. He started looking like he was, you know, wrinkly and chubby and and I like that. And then looking at pictures of poison dart frogs, they have purple toes. So he had to have purple toes. And I think that was my favorite thing about the whole picture. Um, see that owl? I don't know if that's a hidden object or if that's supposed to be there, but I didn't find any hidden objects in here except that owl and that kitty cat. But they looked to me like they belong there. So I just colored them in. I didn't find anything else. 
There's some wind chimes down there hanging on the tree, but I don't know. Anyway, I um, the ba the background uh, is some inks, probably distress or distress oxide inks. I'm not good at blending them. Never have been. I've been. I've used. I've used inks. These distress inks for years, and I have most of the colors, and I love them to pieces. And I've never been any better than this. For some reason, my skill set with these things just never ever improves. <laughs> but. It doesn't matter because I still love the outcome. So even when these things don't blend and I get them all streaky and I can't get them smooth, I still like the way it looks. It's still colorful and pretty. They're still gorgeous inks. It's user error. But um, so I like it. The uh, white snow. Now the snow, I wanted it, you to be able to feel it. I wanted it to really be thick looking. So I took white acrylic paint um, folk art or apple barrel, one of the two. And I just dumped it on the page <laughs> and I let it dry overnight and I did it again. So this, this snow is, is raised up. It's bumpy. You can feel it. And that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be thick, like real snow. So I didn't know if it would work. I thought maybe the paint might just spread and not actually do this, but it did this. Acrylic dries so fast that it didn't really have time to spread before it started to set up. So it's, it's just really thick and bumpy and I love that. I used Posca pen and yeah, I believe this is white Posca that I use for the crystals. I made the crystals look like more like they were see-through and you could see through them to the colors on the other side. Put some white Posca dots in his eyes. Um, everything else is alcohol marker. I did forget to color in this vase. <laughs> I have since fixed it and stuff. I could go back in and color it right now and I probably will at some point, but it just hasn't been important to me yet. Um, and I had a lot of fun with shading. I did all that shading because, you know, these pages are not shaded. Um, so you add all the shading in. And I just, I loved every second of this page. So I'm really excited to do more in this book. This was a very colorable page. I have found that the um, hidden objects are not too bad in this book. That's, there are some pages that it really screws it up. But there's other books that are worse. This was kind of the transition period when they were starting to have less and less. And then eventually they cut them out completely. So if the only thing I found were these wind chimes. I mean, there's a flag. There's a cat and there's an owl. But they look like they belong in the picture. So anyway, that's my poison dart frog. All right. Let's look at another one. All right, I finished a whip that was left over from Halloween. This is a PDF printed out from Zoe Sadler at Zoe Sadler Inc. on Etsy. And I have to say, her images are superb. They are so fun and whimsical and cute and affordable. So if you're looking for cute, overload, and easy to color, check her out because she's got some really adorable images. And this is the ghastly guest house. <laughs> I think it says, let's see what it says there. Uh, ghastly guest house, 13 vacancies. <laughs> because there's all these, there's all these uh, gravestones and a zombie coming up out of the earth. I had so much fun. There's a little spider. Now I did get lost on what's happening up here. Like at first I thought, we were looking through the walls into a room and then I realized, wait, there's a banister here. So maybe she's out on a deck, but then where is he? So I just imagine there's like a little slim deck here and they're outside. <laughs> and I had a lot of fun. This is all alcohol markers. There's an octopus. Dracula up there. Isn't this great? There's so much going on. So many fun things. There's a cat in the window there. There are so many fun things to color. And then I, this bright green is a really fun apple barrel acrylic paint that I have. Now the background is, uh, it looks like Distress Ink. What did I write down that I did? Let me peek at it. No, it's eyeshadow. <laughs> Look, I'm much better with eyeshadow than I am with <laughs> Distress Ink. And um, I like eyeshadow, using eyeshadow for backgrounds like this because it's just, I mean, I could get better coverage, but I like it like this because I like it to look like 
sky. I like it to have some texture in it. I didn't want it to be just flat. And it's really forgiving. I mean, eyeshadow is, you can kind of brush it off where you don't want it. Because um, until you really blendy blend, 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 you know, you watch those makeup artists and they're all like, and then blend, and then blend, and then blend. Um, until you do that to your paper, it doesn't really stay. So it was the last thing I did because it is not going to stay by itself. I mean, it, you will still be able to rub it if you rubbed it. And then I fixed it immediately. So this has been fixed. So this is not coming off at all. And so now it's permanent. Um, I mean, when you think about it, there's these new mica powders that you can buy and do the same thing with. Well, all eyeshadow is is mica powder. So if you've got old eyeshadow laying around, you've got a fantastic art supply. Just whip it out. Or, you know, how often do we go clear to the pan, the bottom of an eyeshadow? Just take out some eyeshadow that you have. This was a really cheap one, which is also why it's a little spotty. When I use the Kat Van D or some of the, or Mac or something more expensive, it goes on better. But I kind of wanted it like this. And I wanted to try that cheap eyeshadow to see if I even wanted to keep it in my art supply. I no longer use it for my face, um, but do I even want to keep it around at all? And I think I like this color blue. So that's my ghastly guest house. I had a lot of fun doing this. It was halfway done and I almost considered not doing it once I got past Halloween, but I wanted to finish it and I'm really glad I did. I love her bottles and her potion up there. She's great. So yeah, check out Zoe Sadler on Etsy and check out some of her pages. All right, I think I have got two more. All right, we did another spooky one and that's in Mythagoria Night Terrors which is probably, another, I don't know. I can't tell you what my favorite one is. I just absolutely love the Mythagorias. And this one was the Wendigo. And this is what I did. Now, I had a really, really good time with this one. I don't know. Okay, the snow is shiny and the crystals are matte. <laughs> Problem is I did the crystals first because I knew that was a lot, I was gonna be doing a lot of covering over the lines with white, it was gonna take a long time. So I started with them and I used this trifecta of, of uh, Copics that I wanted the whole page to kind of mirror the color of. So it was like a, a very light pale pink, a very pale peach and a very pale warm gray. And that's why I want all the crystals to be. And then I did him and I did him in the warm grays and all of his skulls and his nails and really had a good time. I did the browns and warm browns. I just, I wanted him, I don't know, cute. <laughs> I, just, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have this really scary monster and a lot of pinks and lilacs and things like that. And yeah, I wanted him to really show up. And then I got to the sky and I did the sky in this um, sketchy purple. Is it also alcohol marker? I remember the marker was, oh, it was two different markers. Yeah, it was two different markers. It was one lighter and then one darker. And I put the darker one just in splotches to make it. I purposely made it look sketchy like that. because so I wanted to look kind of like a stormy sky, even though it is lilac and pink. And then I had the snow to do. And I realized everything was very matte and I wanted to put some bling in this. And the only thing left was snow. <laughs> So I got out my Arteza acrylic metallic paint and found um, a pink and a lilac and a gray that looked, that very much mirrored the crystals. And I did all the snow in those shades. So the snow ended up shiny and the crystals ended up matte. And you know what? I like it. I think it's, I think it's my favorite page of the month. Um, he turned out exactly what was in my head. I wanted him to really stand out from the background. And I love the shiny snow. I love all the bling I got. All of these little snowdrops are all that metallic acrylic. I love him and with the stars in his eyes. It's kind of scary up close like that, isn't it? But um, yeah, that's him. His antlers are kind of wood. I made the antlers darker than I meant to and then I had to go really dark with the trees so that they could be seen, but, and I wanted him browns and greens. I wanted him to be very woody. So, um, like he came straight out of the wood. So that's my Wendigo, Wendigo. Not quite sure how to pronounce that word. Um, love him. There's so many great pages in this book if you guys ever want to do this one. 
All right, the very last page I did was I couldn't help myself. I had to pull out my favorite book of my entire collection. <laughs> it's hard for me to get away from this one. And I wanted to do another page of the chariot. So this is the chariot, the, the tarot card we just finished doing. And um, this turned out like what I wanted. The only thing I knew at first was I wanted the swans, I think they're swans, um, to be pink. And I wanted these petals. I wanted to make them into petals. I'm not sure they are, but I wanted to make them into petals and make them pink. And then I kind of went from there to the surrounding area. Um, and that's where things went kind of weird. Um, I ended up going orange with these poppy type flowers. So the pink and the orange wasn't working. So I went back over the swans with more of a peach. So they're kind of a pinky peach, but the petals were already done. They clash with these flowers. They obviously don't come from these flowers, whatever. But I didn't want it a whole page of pink. I don't know. I just thought that the, that orange was really pretty. And I liked the blend I got in there. And so I just kept them orange. And then I used um, this grassy green that I like to go with orange. And then I did some weird blue green there. But um, so then when I finished that, I wanted a stormy sky. So I went in with some warm grays because I was using, it looked like I was going to be using warm colors and not this cool stuff. So I did a stormy gray sky, very dark sky. And then I had this contraption. I wanted it to look like metal, but once again, my metal ends up looking like wood. So I don't know if it looks like metal or bamboo, but that is all alcohol markers as well. And then I did some, I went in with some actual gold metallic acrylic paint for some accent, but I don't think that was necessary. I think it looks like maybe a bird pooped on it. <laughs> and then I did, and then I knew I wanted her to have like metallic armor, but then I was stuck. I did not know what to do with her. And I looked at it for several days and then I finally decided I wanted her to be very ghostly. That this was going to be more of like a ghost or fairy-like, you know, the, the, at night that rides across the sky. And, you know, she does this every night, you know, kind of a mythological type thing so I just I didn't put anything in her eyes and I just made her very very pale um, I did the warm gray for a scarf and I did her in a very cool gray almost a blue it might have even been a very very light blue gray and then I did her I whited out her hair with Posca and I decided that was the only way I was going to make her stand out. It was already such a busy page I was already testing the limits of different color palettes clashing uh, there's a lot of clashing happening on this page, uh, but I don't mind it. I don't actually mind when colors clash too much. And um, so I knew she just had to be, to stand out, she kind of had to be colorless. So that's what she is. I do like her armor though. That was fun. I do, I do like to color metal. I just, when it's little like this, like little, I end up making it look like bamboo rather than metal. But that was my chariot for the month. All right. Thank you for getting this far. Thank you for being here with me and seeing my pages that I colored in November. Thank you for your patience. Um, the chariot uh, tarot coloring video is coming out. I had a bunch of videos stacked on top of each other, so I'm getting them out as quickly as I can get them edited. And um, I hope that you have a wonderful winter. I look forward to seeing what you do in December. And have a happy time coloring. Take care of yourselves. I love you. Bye-bye.